Hey everyone, it's Hajra. Sorry I haven't been able to put out so many videos lately. I'm actually in the process of moving, so my videos are going to be a little bit sparse in the next few months. But hopefully after that, it'll go back to normal. Anyway, I went to the Walt Disney Historical Museum in San Francisco, and it's got all sorts of cool historical information and sketches and painting mock-ups, and I was really taken by this Mary Blair sketch for the Small World ride, and it even has little color key notes. And so I decided to do my own from the sketch following the color key as it would make a perfect Halloween video, because she's in this great costume dressed as a mogul court dancer. I'm actually reading all the different color key notes that Mary Blair wrote on her sketch, so I don't want to mess up the color in different places and put it in too dark to begin with, so I'm just going to lay in some stains to begin with. I'm also adding in these little paisley-ish designs that I forgot to on the top of the veil on her blouse, and I'm coloring them green first, and I realized the color key tells me they're actually supposed to be gold, so then I'm going to lift them out, which again I'm able to do because I put them in as a very light stain. And now I'm going to go and put in the correct colors according to the color key, and I'm going to make the trim and the sash green, and then I'm going to make the little shapes of paisley-ish things gold later on. It tells me to make the blouse a light lavender. It also says that it's a sort of flowy, soft chiffon for most of her costume, and you can pay attention to that when you're trying to emulate a particular fabric. The pants are described as a bright magenta, so I'm gonna start laying in a stain for that. I actually don't wanna make the pants super dark because I don't want to make it so that the layers of see-through chiffon over the top are going to look like they're totally dead if I make the pants too dark. The center part of the skirt is done in a brighter violet, and the back part of the skirt is in the same lavender as the blouse, so I'm going to try to put those in as stains really quickly as well. This is all done wet on dry, so now that I know where all my colors go, I'm going to start making all of the stains darker with real color. Start by brightening up the gold jewelry. You can also use metallic paint for this jewelry in the end. I was thinking about doing that, but I'm actually not going to do that because I ended up liking just the watercolor. You can also lay in the stain for the skin as well. I'm going to make mine a medium skin tone doll. Of course, people in South Asia come in all colors from light to medium to very dark, so you can make your doll whatever color you want, and if you make a couple, it would be nice if you made different colored dolls and it would make a nice little rainbow selection of little mogul dancers. I'm treating this like I'm doing this for a travel painting, so I'm not going to use more than the two brushes that I have here, which is a flat brush and an angle brush. It's going to make getting the small areas a little bit difficult, but you can see that it is possible if you hold your brush carefully and it is useful to be able to use your brush in as many ways as you can in small or large spaces if you are not carrying that many brushes with you. Her blouse tends to have sort of this wrinkly chiffon look to it, and you can start adding the wrinkles and lines, and as you start to layer them, it starts to take on the look of ruffled sort of fabric. During the Mughal Empire, South Asia experienced great prosperity, and the Taj Mahal and many other works of amazing art and architecture were produced during this time and were the result of Mughal wealth and decadent tastes. Ironically, even though India is known in the West as primarily a Hindu nation, the Mughal emperors were Muslim, which means yes, the Taj Mahal is Islamic architecture. You can add a darker green to the green sash. All of this painting is being done on wet on dry because it's such a small, not realistic painting, and it can be in that sense a very relaxing painting because we do so many realistic and harder projects. It's very fun to do with children in your family, or you can just do this for fun for yourself like I do because I find doing simpler paintings very therapeutic actually. Try to add a little bit of shading with the paint by making a darker and lighter soft edge and hard edge in places to add a little bit of the shape of her legs. She's got these really cute chubby little doll legs underneath her skirt, so make sure you give them a little bit of roundness. And again, try to shape the chiffon pants so that there's wrinkles in different places. Darker lavender for the back skirt and coming back into the front with a more warmer sort of a fuchsia purple and less of a lavender purple. You can go ahead and lift lines if you want. In my case, I'm just going to start actually adding more water to some of the bottom areas of paint and it's going to cause these blooms that I'm letting happen because I really like how the blooms are looking like fake ruffles and stuff so you don't have to draw them in. Again, this is an easy painting so you don't want to make it too complicated and you can just do a lot of water blooms to give the effect of ruffles. I'm going to add green as my shadow color, the same green I used in the sash so it'll give me some color harmony and I'm using it to make these plates and pleats and to make these folds in the skirt to give it the effect of folding 
and turning fabric. And again, be very loose and be very sort of quick about it. Green is a very effective shadow color on red and also on purple because actually yellow would be the shadow color for purple, but it doesn't show up very well. So you can use green, especially because it'll harmonize with the sash anyway. Going in and adding more gold on the jewelry and the trim and adding a little bit of lavender shadow to the white veil. It is described in her notes as something that's supposed to be a white veil with gold trim, but I'm adding a little bit of shadow purple to it so it doesn't look so stark white on the paper and also so that, again, it matches with the rest of the costume. It doesn't really say what to do with the bracelets except for gold, so I'm going to add green gems in some of the bracelets so that, again, the green doesn't look like it's just on her sash. And now I'm going to go back in and add some fuchsia looking stones. They could be rubies or garnets giving her a nice fuchsia lip. You can do it above and below the sketch line to make little lips. Little feet with a browner medium tone and it will dry lighter. If you want it to go darker when it dries, you can go ahead and add more. Now in a real person, hands and feet are typically darker than say the face and the neck and the throat, but I'm not going to deal with that for such a simple small picture. So you can just make all the same color skin everywhere. I'm going to throw in some black. Now this isn't pure black. It's like a mix of all the different colors. So it doesn't look like a stark, stark black, which is why it reads more as a brownie black. And it's probably a good idea to do that instead of making a really harsh black because your doll will suddenly start to look sort of severe if you add a black out of nowhere when there's no black anywhere else in the painting. Use your angled brush very carefully on its tip to add in the eyes and the little coal in her eyes, the eyelashes, the nose can be done in fuchsia. I can give her a little bit of eyeshadow and I'm gonna blur it out mostly just to give a little bit of an effect because she actually has a very wide eye socket. She's a doll and I just wanna give a little bit of an effect there. Nothing formal as far as eyeshadow goes because I think it ages her too much as a doll. <laughs> Maybe I'm overthinking it. Go back and darken her lip and I'm also going to add blush. Now this is gonna look really scary because it's gonna start to give her that sort of mannequin face but Trust me, after I go back and add in more and soften out the edges and it dries lighter, it won't look as scary. It just looks really scary right now. You can go back and darken up the rest of the costume if you're unhappy with how anything dries, and you can lighten up other areas if you're unhappy with how they dry. So you can see this is my finished product. After I stopped the camera, I added a little bit of lines on the bottom of the skirt to give more movement with my brush. I also added a little bit of gold splashy stuff very lightly in the background to sort of add like a sparkly gold movement because she is a dancer. And so again you can see how I started with this Mary Blair sketch from the Small World Ride and I turned it into a beautiful little mogul court dancer painting which is a perfect costume painting for a little Halloween project and I hope you enjoyed watching it. I used the color notes that were left on the sketch by Mary Blair. I had a lot of fun following the color notes and doing the colors as she was imagining for this doll. You can color this of course however you want. I used watercolor, you can use gouache or you can use marker. Have fun and happy Halloween!